Well, good morning, everybody. Well, our, our method of connecting this morning is a little bit different as Mike outlined. And uh, it's just a reminder that we are in interesting times and we just uh, have opportunity to uh, go with the flow and to, to adjust and find ways to connect with one another, find ways to join together in meditating on God's word and in honoring God in everything we do. It's just so good to see everybody this morning. We are mindful of uh, the challenges that we face as a congregation and, and uh, connecting and, and it is just wonderful that everybody has, has joined uh, in this environment and, and hopefully those that were not able to be with us this morning um, in this live session are able to uh, view this as a recording. So again, we'd like to welcome everybody to our time this morning. Let's go to our God, our Father in prayer as we begin. Our Holy Father, we do want to give you glory in all that we do. The challenges that we feel that we face that are different than the norm, the, the things that are not normal to us. Father, we seek to use these as an opportunity to turn to you, to be reminded that you are at the center of all, that you are in control of all. Father, we do truly desire to give you glory and give you honor. We look out at your creation. We look at the sunshine, the rain, the beauty of the changing seasons. And in all this, we see you, we see your fingerprints. Father, we, we also want to acknowledge your son, Jesus, and just, just ponder with joy at the blessing of salvation that we have been given because of what he has done for us. Father, as we continue in our worship time this morning, we ask, Father, that you please bless our church family. Be with those that will be leading us and sharing thoughts with us, that we can be strengthened and that you can become closer as far as the center of our lives, that we will continue and we will embrace you and we will be dedicated to the Christian life, to the study of your word, and to the challenge to live and follow the example of your son, Jesus. It is through him now that we pray. Amen. Okay, um, I have a, a Bible reading uh, for us, and uh, I was watching for the video to switch to me. It didn't seem to do that as I began to speak, so it'll be what it'll be, I guess. So um, the reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll be reading from verse 17 to the end of the chapter, if you want to follow along. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustless, lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, 
Let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Let, don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. Then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. All right, uh, we're going to do the Lord's Supper now. And uh, before we do that, uh, we're going to read Luke chapter 24. And here I can, I can share my screen here. Oh, it's disabled. Never mind. Uh, it's okay. I can give you that if you want. Thanks. Yeah. We're going we're to start in Luke 13, or sorry, Luke chapter 24, verse 13. This is the story of the two on the road to Emmaus. And uh, just some context for where this happens. We, we've been in one narrative story in Luke here from chapter 22, starting from the Last Supper. And it goes, you know, the Last Supper, Jesus is betrayed. Um, Jesus goes to the high priest. The high priest sends him to Pilate. Pilate sends him to Herod. Herod sends him back to Pilate. Pilate decides to crucify him. He's crucified. And, you know, he's hastily buried before the Sabbath. There's the Sabbath, and then on the first day of the week, some women, it's picking up in Luke 24 at the beginning, some women have gone to the tomb and found it empty and seen some angels, and Peter's gone to the tomb and found it empty, but so far, nobody has seen Jesus. And so we're, we're going to read here from verse 13. You can follow along on the screen if you want. So that very day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, which lay about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were discussing with each other all the various things that had taken place. As they were discussing and arguing with each other, Jesus himself approached and walked with them. Their eyes, though, were prevented from recognizing him. You're obviously having a very important discussion on your walk, he said. What's it all about? They stood still, a picture of gloom. Then one of them, Cleopas by name, answered him. You must be the only person around Jerusalem, he said, who doesn't know what's been going on there these last few days. What things, he asked. To do with Jesus of Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet. He acted with power and he spoke with power before God and all the people. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. And now, what with all this, it's the third day since it happened. But some women from our group have astonished us. They went to his tomb very early this morning and didn't find his body. They came back saying they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of the folk went, with us went off to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. You are so senseless, he said to them, so slow in your hearts to believe all the things the prophet said to you. Don't you see? This is what had to happen. The Messiah had to suffer and come into his glory. So he began with Moses and with all the prophets and ex explained to them the things about himself throughout the whole Bible. They drew near to the village where they were heading. Jesus gave the impression that he was going further, but they urged him strongly not to. Stay with us, they said. It's nearly evening. The day is almost gone. And he went in to stay with them. As he was sitting at table with them, he took the bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, do you remember how our hearts were burning inside us as he walked, or as he talked to us on the road, as he opened up the Bible for us? And they got up then and there and went back to Jerusalem. They found there the eleven and the people with them gathered together. They were saying, the Lord really has been raised. He's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread.
So <clears throat> I, I, uh, every Sunday, since this first Easter Sunday, Christians have gathered together to celebrate Jesus' being raised from the dead and also to break bread and share wine um, in remembrance of him. And I, I can't even begin to imagine how important this story must have been to the earliest Christians who on the very first Easter Sunday knew that Jesus had walked with two of them. And it wasn't until he broke bread and gave it to them that their eyes were opened and that they were able to see the truth that he really had been raised. So my hope for us this morning as we break the bread and as we drink the cup, that we also have our eyes opened and that we can see the truth and we can say with the disciples, the Lord really has been raised. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to give thanks for the bread and the cup, and then I invite all of you to, par to participate and partake. Let's pray. God, thank you for this Sunday morning where we're celebrating that you raised Jesus from the dead. May our eyes be opened so that we can say this too, that really, truly he's been raised. Please bless the bread and bless the cup, and thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, I, it, the, it, it's absolutely amazing, I almost lost the word. Uh, ben had done a phenomenal job leading, letting the, the scriptures speak and, and the way that he had read it, the way the scriptures speaking to me, it, it is just so powerful. And sometimes we read it over and over and over again and we miss things or, or things speak to us differently at this time. And then highlights the piece about they recognize them when they break bread. It's uh, so powerful. So thank you very much. Uh, th this morning uh, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be long, but uh, I very encouraged that doesn't matter what we seems to be a group of people ingenious and in finding ways of meeting and encouraging each other. So this is wonderful. I have to thank the the leadership and the people behind us to to bring this all together. Uh, for us to be able to meet in this fashion. So this is fantastic. Uh, to start, I have a letter uh, that I found uh, back in June uh, this year that was posted uh, in LinkedIn. And interesting, the person posted, uh, there's got to be about 100,000 views on this thing, but uh, he, he was just trying to point out how powerful it is the simple gesture that we make each day in our service to people and the impact that he make. Uh, and so this letter then, I don't know where he got this letter, but somehow he got hold of it and he posted. The letter said, June 27, 2020. Dear Sarah, this is a little bit awkward, but I waited a really long time to pass this on to you. My wife and I came in for haircuts shortly before Christmas of last year. My wife was suffering from dementia and you treated her as if you've been working with dementia patients all your life. You let us sit next to each other. And when it came time for her cut, you turned her chair towards me so I could watch her expression as you cut her hair. It turned out even better than I thought it would. Sadly, she died in March, and that haircut was one of the last best moments of her life. She felt so pretty. 
She visited the mirror in the bathroom several times during the day and would come out beaming. To see her so happy was priceless. Looking back, it was likely one of dozens of haircuts she gave that day, but one which revitalized a woman's sense of self and her singular beauty. I hope you always realize the power of your profession. It's so easy to take things like that for granted. It was signed, sincerely, a grateful customer. How powerful a simple gesture for this hairdresser uh, named Sarah, to her is instinctive, the way that she approached it. And interesting enough, that when you think about getting a haircut, it's one of those things that we hate. And that's why I do my own hair for the last 25, 30 years. I haven't gone to a hairdresser. First of all, I'm too cheap. I don't want to pay for it. And a second, I just don't want to have to go through the whole thing about having to touch your hair and wash it and then cut it and don't, don't do it right. And you walk away with a million hair sticking in your back and you're itching all the way through. I thought, you know, I just put my head down the sink, zing, 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 zing. I'm done, I'm happy, right? So you wouldn't think a haircut is a pleasurable adventure. And somehow for her, instinctively, not only she understood the person that she's cutting the hair for, that she's serving, but her spouse, the husband, how important it is for him. And I read this and I thought, wow, it just speaks to me, right? It echoes James chapter 1, verse 27, when James said, to our God, the pure and flawless religion is to help orphans and widows and that distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world is to help orphans and widows in their distress. And even Jesus himself in Matthew 25, when he was telling them about the last scene, the sheep on his right, the goat on his left, what he said to the, the sheep on his right, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me some to drink. When I was sick, you visited me. When I need clothes, you clothed me. And when I was in prison, you came to visit me. Of course, the people on the right look at him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or sick? Or... And he said to them, when you've done to one of the least of these, you've done it to me. So this whole idea about being instinctive within us as creature of our God to serve other creatures and beings that he had created that he loved, how can I instinctively find and understand and do that? Because I come across many opportunities during the day that I can stop and serve. But somehow, as you know what I mean, right? Our laziness, our self-centeredness sometimes give us actually great and legitimate and, and very believable excuses. I, I'm gonna be late for appointments. I really can't stop to help. And it is not really a safe neighborhood. You know, I don't want my kids in the car. I don't want to expose them to that, right? Or who knows what disease they have. They might have COVID for goodness sakes, right? I can't be near anybody right now, right? I mean, just can't be near anyone. We have, I, I just, I, I'm speaking by myself. I have just a million excuses, right? Even at work sometime, I walk by and someone needed a hand to do, to open the door or something. I said, well, there is someone out closer than me, right? and opening that door and I just gotta get going. So how, how can we change our attitude and mindset? And just like anything in my life, anytime I start a project, anytime I start a big project, I know me, I start small, just two very simple things. I start small and I find someone to hold me accountable. Now, if I don't wanna get the project done, I never tell anybody. If I don't tell someone, if I don't get done, only I, well, and I think God sometimes knows. So I won't tell anybody. But if I really want to get something done, I start small and I go tell somebody. Someone that will hold me accountable, normally my wife, right? If it has to do with housing. At work, there are a couple of people I know I can trust and I can tell them and they will come in. So just, just let me give you an example. 
our, our leadership have challenged us since the beginning of this pandemic, right? And Mike, I still remember him up there saying, call two people this week. You, you Will you commit to contact two people this week? And I'm telling you, I meant to do that for I don't know how many months, right? But <laughs> it's always stuff. So how long does it take to write a card, put a stamp on it, and put it in the mail? But think about when's the last time you got a card? How delighted it is, right? And even though your grandkids or your kids, sometimes you get a card in the mail, how, how delightful that is. It takes me no time, but yet somehow things always got into place, right? So here's my commitment to you. And I, I would love you brothers and sisters to follow this. I'm, I'm making myself accountable to all of you. So going forward, every week I'm gonna contact two people. Small, right? Just two people. Five minutes each, right? So 10 minutes out of the next seven days, 24 hours a day. Can you imagine? That's very small. But knowing me, I'll start small. I'll contact two people over the next week. And every time you see me or you can send me a text or you can call me and they say, Samson, did you do it? I'm going to be held accountable to you that I'll do that. So I think we collectively, and I just have one very small example. You have other things that you might want it to do. And because of your ability and, and what God has given you, you have other things that really opportunity come your way that none of us will ever see. So my challenge to all of us is let's be the sheep and not the goat. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, so much. You've given each of us a basket of talents and gifts and resources that, Father, you allow us to freely deploy in this earth. So, Lord God, we want to be faithful to you. We want to be faithful for what's been given. That, Lord, we plead with you. Allow the Spirit to work through us that we can be the conduit of your blessings and new resources, and that we're faithful to what's been given. So Lord God, please, we ask you to bless each one of us, to walk with each one of us as we move forward from here to decide and to make a commitment for you and for your people on the faith of this earth that you have put into our contact on a daily basis, that Father, we will see them as you see them that we, you open our eyes to opportunities. And Father, then give us the courage. Give us the courage and the willingness to take on those opportunities and stir, regardless, big or small. Because Father, we know any act that we have done in your name is going to be phenomenal because you then take it and you amplify what we do. So Father, thank you in advance for this opportunity. And Lord, walk with us and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, back to you, Mike. Thanks so much, Samson. And uh, Jamie is going to just wrap us up in our worship time. He has a couple of things he'll mention, and then uh, he'll lead us in another prayer. Thanks, Samson. Uh, I just encourage everyone... Um, a couple of nights ago, I don't know if, if uh, how many are aware, Josh Hendricks was baptized. And so a number of you are aware of that. But if you're going to send a letter out to someone or make contact, someone would be encouraging uh, to reach out to Josh and encourage him on his new walk this week. And um, uh, it was very exciting. And so a lot of people did a lot of work around here to um, uh, get the baptistry cleaned up and it was the first baptism it's not even finished yet we, but we made it work and it was the first baptism in uh, with the newer uh, paint and the new um, uh, the, the the new appearance of the baptistry but it was a really nice night so just keep that keep that family in your prayers and keep that uh, young man josh in your prayers as well um there's still room for uh, coming in in person We've got lots of room. Um, I think we've got probably 25 around there uh, right now at this point. So if you're interested, let me know. We do have some visitors coming this morning. Um, and so they reached out this week. They wanted to come and try our church. And so um, 
to our church service. And so keep them in your prayers. And, um, and with that, let's all pray together as we conclude our online uh, service here. So let's pray. Again, Father, what an encouragement to have so many brothers and sisters together here to, rem to remember we're not alone and to remember, Father, that in this world, your hand is at work as, as we studied this morning and seen you send Saul out to the Gentiles and yet his short, short, rather short life, Lord, in mission work. And yet here we are today, we're seeing the effects of, uh, of all those, Lord, that you sent out in the first century starting a church. We know, Lord, you're working with us, and we don't know what our efforts will amount to, but we trust you, and we just pray that you would help us to, to, to put that time in, even when it doesn't seem like things are going the way we would understand. And may everything we do uh, result in glory to you and people um, turning from sin uh, and, and finding freedom through your son. Lord, we ask that you would bless this community around us. Help us to be a blessing to those around us so that they would notice you and we'd make a difference and an impact. Help us, Father, to be blessed as a community within the community. Bless the church. Be with especially the young people, Lord, the families and, and children that are coming up, the next generation that are going to be the new leaders, Father, in, in, um, in your churches here and around the world. And we just pray you would bless them and strengthen them and help them, help us to do a good job, Father, uh, in, in planting in them, Father, the, uh, the knowledge of, of your guidance, of your armor that you give us, and um, help them to follow you faithfully. Be with marriages, Lord, and all the struggles that are going on within, um, within the church communities, Father, that you would just strengthen marriages of your people, help Satan not to get a foothold. We pray, Father, for the elderly and the sick. We th pray, Father, that you would help um, comfort them, help us, Father, to find ways to support them and to remind them, Father, just as we're reminded this morning of the many blessings we have in your community as a church. Father, we pray for, um, pray for strength with our faith, with our love, with our unity. Help us, Father, to continue to show your love with each other within uh, the city and with even with our enemies, Lord. May they see your love and turn to you. And we pray for our plans, Lord, that as in the, in the coming months and years ahead, that you would bless our plans, that you would walk with us, Father, and in a way that we can just be able to see some of the fruits of our labor and be encouraged. And just show us, Father, that, um, um, just show us, Father, your approval, that help us, Lord, to be able to know that, um, that you're reminding us of working with us. Be with our church plants, Lord. We pray for Guelph and Southwest Kitchener. Bless them and strengthen them and help us to have many more opportunities to You're on mute, Jamie. How long was I on mute for? Just 20 seconds. Just the oh, last minute. Okay, just went on mute. Okay. Um, and God, we just pr pray your blessing on the rest of this week ahead. And we just ask that, uh, uh, that you would just help us um, to remember that each day could be our last and help us to live every day to the fullness of, of in glorifying you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, that was uh, a little bit interesting that we had a, a mute arrive uh, when we didn't expect it. Uh, but uh, thanks for everyone uh, for joining in our uh, worship assembly. I'm going to stop the recording. And we'll have a few minutes just to visit before we uh, end our Zoom call time this morning.